I am Rasmus Benestad, and I'm going to talk about uh, different ways of using empirical orthogonal functions, or EOFs, for evaluating global climate models. So why do we use EOFs? So the data that we analyze has had a lot of redundancy. So we have, we have typically uh, patterns of coherent behavior and the UFs will boil down information and reduce the volume of data. So it's a, it's a way of compressing the information and boiling it down to data volumes. Um, or you can also describe it as a way of reorganizing the information and by emphasizing the more pronounced characteristics. Uh, the UFs uh, are a neat mathematical technique, uh, which has very useful mathematical properties and are useful for uh, data analysis. The UFs are not necessarily physically meaningful uh, as they are mathematical concepts, but they're still useful for, um, uh, for the analysis of data. I will give a demonstration on uh, how to calculate empirical orthogonal functions also known as EOFs and common EOFs in uh, R. And um, I will use uh, RStudio to do this demonstration and we and uh, to, uh, to, to uh, estimate um, EOFs, we need to first um, activate uh, an uh, R package called ESD that is available from uh, GitHub here, yeah, freely available. And then I have two uh, reanalysis data sets that I want to uh, carry out the, the demonstration on. The first one is NSEP reanalysis one. So if we just run this, you see that we uh, retrieve uh, this, the surface air uh, temperature on the monthly time scale from the era uh, from the NSEP reanalysis one. And I, I want to just look at the annual mean temperature here now for simplicity. So I just uh, take the annual uh, mean value of that. And then I can estimate EUFs of this annual mean value. So if I run EUF here, uh, then I will estimate EUFs. And I can plot these EUFs as shown here. So here you can see um, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, pattern of uh, variance uh, associated with this leading EUF. So here we plot the eigenvalues of 20 EUFs. And now we just look at the first mode here, and that explains about 53, 54% of the variance here. And here you can see the time evolution of this, this pattern. So there's, there's been a trend here. Now we want to, for the common UFs, um, com well, common UFs are used to compare different data sets or uh, combine different data sets. So then we need another reanalysis. So we take the error five, Reanalysis, and I have already downloaded the uh, uh, the um, annual mean temperature here. Uh, so, but I um, also had to make sure that uh, I have the uh, uh, the same uh, that the index, the timestamps are in year because in when I download this, it has a different format. So they it needs to have have a matching format to the one that we already have here. So now I can combine. Uh, the two reanalysis uh, using combine here, uh, and that will basically take the anomalies uh, of both, and it will regrid the second one onto the grid of the first one, so they are on the same grid, but then after each issue of time. And the common EUF is basically just the EUF of this combined data set. That is all that is to it. But the nice thing now is if we plot the uh, common EUFs, you see now um, we have a new pattern here, and you can see uh, that this is the same spatial uh, um, uh, spatial temporal covariance structure that is found in both of these data sets. This is what they have in common, and also you, you see that they have like a common um, um, uh, they have the uh, the common eigenvalues here describing how much variance that they account for. So now it's reduced to 43%. And here you can see how the evolution has been. So they are quite similar, but there are also some differences there. 
this last bit here is, is due to that uh, the fact that we don't have a um, complete data, uh, complete uh, record of the last year. So if it x, if we look at the range of index x and range of index y, you see that it's um, the uh, y here has um, 2021, which is not complete. So we can we can say y equals subset y it that index time is is between c uh, 1948 and 2020. So now it has the same same time uh, coverage as previous ones. Now we can combine them again like this, and then we can run the common UF and plot them. Now we see. So now we can just remove these all of these and do another plot. So this is the common UF. So then now you can see that there are some differences here. Uh, but also some similarities. We can also look at the um, IP equals two, that's index pattern two, to see how, uh, sorry, it drops on top of the other, I think the it clear it. Second, the second EUF here, and you can see now you start to see uh, more discrepancies between the two data sets. Uh, and if we do it for the uh, third one, I expect to see even more differences here. So you can see like there's quite large uh, discrepancies. So this is one way that comedy OFs can be used for uh, comparing data sets and also can be used for comparing uh, uh, the simulations from global climate models against uh, reanalysis. <clears throat> there are various ways of applying uh, empirical orthogonal functions uh, that can be used to compare, say, the mean seasonal cycle that the uh, uh, models simulate, or uh, or um, the annual um, mean temperature or annual rainfall totals. And also, we can use EUFs to compare uh, trend maps, um, and also uh, use common EUFs as a basis for empirical statistical downscaling, which I will not talk about here. And the EOFs are somewhat similar to the Fourier transforms, so wavelets, so principal component analysis and eigenfunctions. So they are quite similar uh, to those. Um, so here um, you can see uh, it's, um, I have an R um, uh, script uh, in, uh, in our studio. Um, and I have um, gathered EUFs from um, um, and a large number of uh, climate models, uh, both CMIP5 and, and CMIP6. Uh, um, so this pattern here, show, uh, this map here shows the spatial covariance pattern, um, which shows how the uh, temperature varies um, in step uh, over various parts of the Nordic countries here. So the most pronounced uh, amplitudes are found in the eastern part, and then you have uh, smaller amplitudes also in, in, over the oceans in the west. And this pattern explains 97% of the variance. Um, so you can see that one pattern here describes most of the mean annual cycle uh, simulated by, by the, um, the models. Uh, and then the other high order ones uh, are more represent more noise. And down here you can see the uh, the means the annual cycle uh, or the weights that um, this pattern here is weighted by. So first is January and the twelfth uh, is in, is December, and the blood line here represents the um, uh, EUF of era five reanalysis. So this is uh, sort of the real world. And the red lines represent CMIP5 runs. So these are different models from the CMIP5 multimodel um, ensemble. And the blue uh, curves represent CMIP6. So here you can actually see that the, um, there's an improvement um, from CMIP5 to CMIP6. So the CMIP6 actually doing a, a better job in reproducing the, the mean annual cycle of the temperature over this region here. So these, these are weights, so, so the, the, the total temperature is, is a product between these patterns and these indices and also these weights here. Um, 
so if we here is the second pattern you can see it's uh, it only explains a small uh, fraction of the variance 1.2 uh, percent and it has a different uh, pattern so here we, we we see like a more coherent uh, temperature variations over the whole of the Nordic uh, and there's a less of a gradient here and you can see that it this has a more uh, complicated structure in terms of uh, um, the median cycle and again the CMIP6 uh, runs are um, represents or reproduce the uh, the uh, the reanalysis more closely than the CMIP5 uh, runs so this was common UFs used to to evaluate the model's ability to reproduce the mean annual cycle. And we can do the same thing for um, uh, the, um, the um, uh, interannual variability. So here we're looking at the annual mean temperatures for each year here. So these are again, the, the, uh, the spatial patterns and the, we have the strongest amplitude here in the north, yeah, northeast here. Um, and you can see that the the, uh, the the black curve here represents the uh, the uh, reanalysis, and you can even capture this. Uh, there's a trend here as well, and and you and you see that um, there's both the CMIP five, the red lines, and CMIP six uh, runs are actually able to reproduce a typical uh, variability and also the trend here as well. So they. They do fairly well here. So this is the UF number one. So it it doesn't explain as much of a variance as in the, in the mean annual cycle. So here we have seventy nine percent here. If you look at the second UF here, so here we have a second UF. So it represents eight point seven um, percent of of the variance. We can see that uh, the models are, uh, are still uh, doing fairly well. The more of the CMIP five runs are uh, further away from the uh, from the uh, era five, and this pattern here is described by um, by a gradient field. So we have a gray temperature gradient between north uh, northwest and southeast here. So another way of applying EUFs here. Uh, so here's actually the, uh, the the mean spread of the trends. So we look at the trends. So what we do here is actually we take one trend map for each um, each model run here. So each of these represent now a different model rather than time. And the last one here is error five here. Uh, so this is the, the, the mean trend map here or the EUF of, of trend maps for each one where one where <coughs> one map for each of the stations. And you can see that. <laughs> the, the leading UF represent 97.96%. Uh, so um, most of these uh, models here um, reproduce this, the, the same trend with the strongest warming in the, in the north uh, east here. And when we did uh, the UF analysis of this, we kept the mean value. We didn't um, do the analysis on, on the mean analysis, on, on anomalies, but uh, so these are the absolute values. And now we can do the same thing for the second mode here, and uh, you can see that this doesn't explain that much at all. And but there are still some kind of sim similarities that they they're not very dissimilar. Uh, so finally, here is a scatter plot between the um, two uh, principal components, mode one and mode two. And the black line here represents the era five. So this, this uh, cloud of symbols here show uh, where the trend maps simulated by the uh, climate models, uh, that is between 1950 and 2020 compared to the era five. And you can see that it's basically, they are, well, well quite, um, the cluster uh, fairly well around the uh, era five. Uh, there's some outliers here, some blue ones, which are the CMIP6, and some red ones, which are the CMIP5 runs.